In this video, we're checking out the Creality CR10 V2, the successor to the machine that skyrocketed Creality into the 3D printing history books. Along with the CR10S and the CR10 Mini and the CR10 Max, there's been a lot of variations. So should you get this one? Let's get started. This CR10 version 2 comes to me directly from Creality and it shares many similarities with the Monster i3 style which has been knocked off a bazillion times since it debuted in early 2017. The original CR10 became well loved for its incredible price to print volume but it had its own fair share of issues with quality control, long term reliability and usability quirks to name a few. But here we are at the end of 2019 and Creality has clearly grown up quite a bit as a company and it shows with this 3D printer. The print volume is the same, an immense 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters, but this huge vertical frame is now fully braced with these supporting rods, making it incredibly rigid compared to the original. It arrives flat packed and you have to assemble these components yourself and just make sure it's truly squared, but it isn't overly difficult. The print surface continues the recent trend with Creality replacing bare glass with this ceramic coated glass print surface. And the trick with these surfaces is they must be heated for the first layer to adhere. But once they cool down, the prints can be just popped off quite easily. The bed takes quite some time to heat to 60 degrees C, which you need for PLA prints. And the firmware heats the bed and then the hot end, which means there's quite a wait for prints to start from cold. The movement is through V-rollers on all axes, and although they were tensioned from factory, I'm finding the X-axis rollers are wearing very quickly, and the Y-axis rollers came loose during operation and needed re-tightening. There are three per side on the Y-axis though, so bed stability, once they're tight, is really quite good. The extruder is a 1.75mm Bowden style feeding into Creality's standard hot end design, though they now have an injection molded cover for it, which has the hot end in a silicon sock, and a nice powerful blower style cooling fan which ducts to both sides of the print to cool it uniformly and actually resolves quite nice details. In addition to this however, Creality advises the CR10 V2 as being compatible with a swapped in imported Titan Direct Drive Extruder. I was discussing this with Naomi over on Twitter before she was unlawfully locked out of her Twitter account, she still is by the way, and there was some contention as to whether it really was genuine from E3D or not. I'm sure she'll be releasing a video on this printer soon on her channel though, so I'll look out for that. Regardless, though my machine didn't come with a Titan, real or not, so whatever, just make sure yours comes with one, I suppose. All right, now onto the contentious external power supply and control box, which Creality has migrated into this version. Some people love the idea that you can put the machine into an enclosure and keep the electronics external, but some people hate how awkward it makes the machine if you have to move it around. I don't really have an issue with it being external, but just be careful not to damage the umbilical cord of delicate wires if you should move it. Additional upgrades include a Meanwell 350 watt power supply and TMC 2208 stepper drivers for silent operation. And yeah, it really is quiet compared to the original. Creature comforts beyond that include a filament outage sensor, power loss recovery, and a move to a full size SD card, which is much nicer to handle and much more durable than micro SD. And so, with all these improvements to mechanical design and functionality, what of the interface for this redesign of a classic 3D printer? Well, it's basically the same. In fact, the firmware and click wheel interface Creality used feels like I'm using my original WANHAL Duplicator i3 from four years ago. There isn't even an assisted bed leveling routine in this machine at all. You have to hone the machine and then move the axes using the click wheel or disable the steppers and do it yourself to level this huge bed. What's more, it seems to glitch out if you do certain things like preheat and then try to home it just sits there. All I can say is I don't know what they were thinking. Like it says new firmware, perhaps they mean the filament run out, which is impossible to withdraw by the way, should it actually run out. Uh, because the sensor's in the way, and it also turns the heat bed off and waits, so the print will delaminate off the bed anyway, so... <sighs> okay, 
Maybe I'm being a little bit harsh, but seriously, a 300 by 300 millimeter print bed is a nightmare to level as is, and this will be a pain point for many newbies. They do say that the CR10 V2 is compatible with a BL Touch for automatic bed level compensation, but they didn't have the guts to include one from factory, or they just cut a bit of cost, which is a shame. Another machine Crowley released recently is the CR10 Max. So how does that differ to this? Well. I don't have one on hand, but the mechanical design looks quite similar with the bracing, just with a larger print volume and a BL touch from factory. And it also has a color touchscreen interface, which I would have much preferred over this, but it also is a lot more expensive. Michael from Teaching Tech has a great review and a few update videos on his experience with the CR10 Max. So if you want to compare the two, you can go check out his video here. Onto prints, and once I discovered that the print surface likes an ultra close first layer, the test prints completed with no problems using the tiny sample spool of white PLA. Bowden extruders often have issues with stringing, but using the skinned Cura Slicer Crayoli provided with the machine and stock settings resulted in this stringing test result. And yeah, I'm pretty impressed with that. I'm working on a new clearance test, but for now, just use my older version on this one, and the 3D printer was able to resolve down to 0.2 millimeter clearances for print in place models, which is above average. And this print turned out mostly clean as well. You can even see the STL tri triangle facets in some areas, but this vertical artifact is a sad possibility with V rollers. And I can definitely feel a flat spot as I move the gantry in that area, which does translate into the 3D print. I can tell you though, cooling is definitely much improved compared to previous hot end designs. And although this print did fail, the filament tangled around the spool holder and outage sensors can't detect that, so it's kind of my fault. The support material pulls away super easy from these prints and the detail is so nicely resolved with some minor ghosting. It's quite interesting, Polyarchy Elixir in this abyss color actually helps bring out imperfections because it's so glossy, but I really like the look of it. This is actually quite a good print, just a shame the filament got tangled and it didn't complete. I scaled up this kitty cat, the Gayer Anderson cat, because hey, why not? We have 400 millimeters to work with and at 0.2 millimeter layer heights in this Polyarchy FX PLA, it just looks lovely. I mean, the underside layers, which usually look terrible where there's a support material interface, if you told me a Bowden extruder design made that, I would have called you a big fat liar, but it did. But sadly, the flat spot is still visible in this print as well. Alrighty, so this machine can do smaller prints totally fine, but I simply don't have the time or patience to run a multi-day 3D print to test that 400 millimeter of Z height. I'm not gonna just make a giant cat because it's gonna take forever and then like just waste heaps of material. Well, this printer comes stock with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but what if we swap that out for something a little larger? Say 0.6, 0.8, nah. Let's go one. One millimeter nozzle. Printing with a one millimeter nozzle on a machine only designed to extrude through a hole less than half that size requires some tweaks indeed. I ramped the PLA printing temp up to 225 degrees C and dropped the print speed down hard to 15 millimeters a second. Now that's still pretty quick for a nozzle that huge, but it's a lot slower than the stock settings. And I used a layer height of 0.6 millimeters, though you could also increase that further with such a huge nozzle. Now what we have here is your best friend for quick, rough and strong 3D prints. And I turned this rocket design into a huge pot using vase mode. And this took six hours and it's full of stuff. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is the print where the bed's rollers seem to come loose, but ignoring that resulting imperfection further up, the layers just look incredible. There's something addictive about printing at resolutions like this. Just be warned, it absolutely annihilates your filament. This was all that was left on the roll after just these two prints. These little gears are another great reason to try a larger nozzle sometime. They only took around five minutes each to complete with a 0.6 millimeter layer height, and they'd be heap strong and totally adequate for mechanical design and prototyping. So if you're into cosplay or you need to print jigs or big parts or functional models, you've got to give it a go. The 15 millimeters per second print speed is a bit of a downer. I think Creality really needs to throw a volcano hot end at this machine and maybe just stick with the Titan extruder like just stock and not make it an optional add-on. But really, I just don't believe in 0.4 millimeter nozzles on machines this big anyway, but that's just how I see it. So now we reach the conclusion. Should you get yourself a CR10 version two? Well, 
Yes, I do think so, and I don't usually have a conclusion like that. But this bad boy is $460 US at the moment, and that's a lot of printer for the money. I am satisfied that, for the most part, Creality has taken input from the community on board and built a better machine than the original. And the original, remember, was so popular. And I believe this machine is a worthy successor. I just wish they moved on from the horrible click wheel implementation and made the bed leveling and first time setup a little easier for a newbie from factory. That would have made this a 100% recommendation on my end. And it's a big boy. And if you don't need a print volume this big and you would value more usability, then maybe an original Prusa i3 Mark III S or the new Prusa Mini would possibly be a better bet. But if you do print big, then this is the happiest I've been with Creality for a long time. If you want to pick up a CR10 version 2, you can find links in the video description. And full disclosure, Crowley sent me, the, me this machine free of charge for purpose of review. And honestly, that was brave of them, considering how that those reviews have gone in the past. But all opinions are my own. And if you found this video useful, then perhaps consider subscribing. I'd love to have you on board. Here on Makers Music is my aim to empower your creativity through technology. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.